Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I thought we'd talk about new app updates this week since there's some significant changes here and there for iOS, watchOS, iPadOS, and macOS. Now the first one is the Apple Store app. So if we go over to the Apple Store app, this has been updated with new engraving options. Now we could engrave our AirPods, AirPods Pro before, but now you can engrave them with Memoji. This is something that Apple updated recently. Many people thought we could already do, but apparently we couldn't. You have the new capability to engrave Memoji on AirPods and AirPods Pro exclusively in the app. And that's according to Apple, as you can see here on the App Store app page. So that's something they upgraded this week. Also, if you're someone who watches soccer or football outside of the United States, if we go into the TV app, we'll let it load just here for a moment scroll down and you'll see there's sort of a placeholder here for an MLS season pass. It says starting in 2023 stream every regular season match and the playoffs without local blackouts or restrictions only on Apple TV with MLS season pass. Apple has actually said when this will be available. It will start February 1st, 2023 ready for the season on February 25th and it will be $14.99 per month or $99 for a season. So that's something that is coming up soon. We'll also have more with different sports later on. Now, the next thing is WhatsApp. Outside of the US, this is one of the most used apps there is. And while we don't use it here a ton, many people constantly ask me to cover updates for this. And so users will soon be able to use WhatsApp linked up to four devices at once instead of just one. So similar to using iMessage, if you want to use it here and then on your iPad, maybe a different iPhone that you use for work, you'll be able to use that as well on both of those devices, up to four devices. It's currently in beta on Android, and also they're rolling out business directories on iOS and Android. So you'll see here on their blog, it says find message and buy on WhatsApp. So today we're sharing an update on what we're building to help people find message and buy something from a business on WhatsApp. So that's something that's rolling out. It looks like across the world at this point, it may take a little bit to show up, but it's something that they're rolling out all over the place. So it's great to see them continually update this. I would like to have some sort of competition for iMessage and I would like to see Apple add a bunch of these features as well. Now, if you use an Apple watch and you use the app audible, there's been a major update for that. So audible is a way to listen to audiobooks aside from using maybe the podcast app or the Apple books app rather. And that's something you can use on audible, but now you can use it on your Apple watch without having your iPhone nearby. So if you have a cellular plan or maybe you're on Wi-Fi. You can go into audible and then actually stream directly from here without your iPhone. So it's also one streaming. They say it's simultaneously downloading it in the background for offline listening. So it will download the data. And then of course you can listen to your book. We can go back over, go to different books here, Steve jobs, an old book here, listen to that. And then it will also sync seamlessly across devices. So you can pick what you want to listen to it on and then just listen to the book here. So it's great that they've added that. I thought it had that all along, but now they've added it without having to have your iPhone nearby. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, since there's been a lot of controversy around Twitter, and we'll talk more about that in a moment, is I have a Telegram and Discord server where if you want to continue the conversation, talk about tech, iOS, Android, or many other subjects, I'm often hanging out in Telegram or Discord. So we have a bunch of different topics there. If you want to check it out, it's linked in the description, and we've had that for quite some time, probably one or two years, maybe even longer than that. Now, one password is something I use regularly to manage my passwords. Now, this is something that I've talked about before and keychain is great, but one password works across multiple devices. So if I'm testing a different phone, Android or windows or Mac, you can use it across all of those different devices and have your passwords available. They're adding pass key support next year. So they redesigned it to one password eight this year, and now they're adding pass key support very soon. I can't wait for that. And for those of you unfamiliar with pass key, that's something that was added with iOS 16, where you can log in using bio authentication instead of having to remember a password. More and more websites are using this, such as bestbuy.com and more, so I can't wait until that's everywhere. It's a standard on not only iOS, but other devices as well.
I'll leave an affiliate link in the description where you can get a discount and try it out if you want to. And it's just something I use all the time. So I think it's great and highly recommended. Now there's a new app I wanted to tell you about called facades. This is sort of a tourist overview of Apple stores that have been put together. So this is a very simple app. And if we go into locations, you can see there's 521 stores. You can bookmark a store, see the stores in the United States, see store data, design styles, and more. So this is great. There's tons of information here, and maybe we want to find an Apple store in the United States nearby. We can check them out. We'll just find the two that are nearby to me, Apple South Park and Apple North Lake. If we go to South Park, you can see information about it, when it was opened, when they moved, what the location address is and more. So you can see even the design style where it says the classic design, classic upgrade, different revisions it's gone through and more. It's sort of a full guide to Apple stores. So it's great. If you want to check it out, you can see any of them in the world. It's very thorough. And if we go back here, you can see. Well, let's go here to the different stores or regions rather. And if I wanted to go to Italy, we can check those out as well. Anywhere around the world, you have information about it. So I thought I'd just share that. It's just a free app and be sure to check it out if you're interested. Also, another free app I wanted to mention is iBeta. iBeta allows you to see what's been released. So all of the different current releases, whether that be public releases or beta releases are listed here. So if you want to know about those, I typically tweet about these before they're out and these will be updated a little bit later, but it gives you the information along with the build number and release state. It's super helpful as far as a resource. If you just want to know what versions are current, especially for someone like me, that's telling you about what's new and what the current versions are. But again, another free app that's worth checking out now, not so much an app, but a redesign. I shared with you a couple weeks ago that iCloud.com was getting a redesign at beta.icloud.com. It was in beta. Now it's rolled out to everyone. So you can see it has an animation there and it has an all new design if I sign in. So you'll have your profile information at the top. You have your apps, your photos, your drive, any reminders, and even your mail. And then you can fully customize this. So you can go into different features, add apps, remove apps, and you'll see all the customization here. It's been really updated with a modern design and look, and it's really great. If you want to check it out, you can see it not only on iOS, but also iPad, Mac, Windows. Just go to iCloud.com and you'll see that redesign. Now, something coming this week is Google maps updates and maps is something I use all the time. Yes, I use Apple maps, but I use Google maps as well. And they're updating it with a live view of sort of an augmented reality version where you go in, go into the live view and see what's around you using augmented reality. This is something that will be updated very soon when you go into search and then you can just use your phone with the camera to see what's around you. I tested some beta versions of that quite some time ago and it really works well for directions and things. You can use that part now along with Apple maps, but now having to see what's around you, different restaurants that was sort of shown off many years ago and now it's finally here. And I'm sure Apple will update their app soon as they're making a big push with augmented reality as well. Now I did want to talk about Twitter a little bit since that's been in the news and very controversial and Twitter continues to get updated despite everything else going on. They remove the ability to see what device you're tweeting from. And I think personally, this is a mistake just because it was great to see maybe someone promoting an Android phone from an iPhone. Of course, those people will not really mind that at all. But if you're tweeting about an iPhone and you're tweeting from an Android phone or the other way around, it was great to see that you can't see that anymore. Also something that's coming soon apparently is direct message end to end encryption. So if you're going into someone's profile and you're messaging them, you'll now hopefully see end to end encryption options later on. So that's something that they said they're working on or someone said they were working on and then sort of Elon Musk confirmed again, it depends what happens to Twitter, but to have end to end encryption with this is a great update as people are constantly messaging me. So that's something I definitely would appreciate. Now, if you use Swift playgrounds, there was a big update for it. That was not a feature update, but something pretty important. If you use it on your iPad or Mac Swift playgrounds allows you to practice coding or learn coding, and then also make some of your own apps. However, if you had an issue with your code and then you corrected it, there could still be an error message about it. They've updated the app so that that's fixed. So that obviously would be a big bug knowing that you don't really have an error and you can't figure out why it's telling you that that's been fixed. So make sure you're updated. If you use Swift playgrounds, whether that's creating apps or just learning to code in general. 
Now, a couple more things I wanted to mention have to do with creative apps. So Adobe Creative Suite is now on sale. So if we go over here for Black Friday, you can get up to 25% off. Just go to adobe.com. I don't have an affiliate link for that or anything, but if you're a student and teacher, you can get 71% off. Now I don't use Adobe apps. I typically use Pixelmator Pro and some other things, Apple apps such as Final Cut Pro. But if you use Adobe apps, that's a pretty great deal. Also, instead of Adobe apps or instead of Pixelmator, Affinity Photo got a huge update this week to Affinity Photo 2. So you can see that here. You can check it out if you want to. You can download it and then you have to pay for it after, but you can at least try it out and you'll see what's new. They have a refined and redesigned UI, non-destructive raw develop, live masks, and much, much more. So this is a pretty big update a pretty major upgrade for Affinity Photo and all of the other Affinity products as well. So that's been updated as well. And so I just wanted to share those updates with you. Not a ton else, major bug fixes on many different apps. If you go into the app store and then we go to our updates, you can see here there's a bunch of different things such as bug fixes for Slack or Google Meet and all the different apps I have and many more. But those were the major features updates this week and some apps I thought you'd enjoy. So be sure to check those out. If you haven't already checked out facades or iBeta, those are great. And if you want me to do a what's on my iPhone video, I do typically do those towards the end of the year. I had a few people request it, but let me know what you think of that in the comments below. I have been using craft instead of notes lately, just to try that out and some other apps, such as just the regular podcast app instead of the other ones I used to use. So been trying some different things, different layouts. Let me know if you'd like me to cover that in depth in a different video. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.